You know, I'm curious about your your personal lives. If you had to reflect on your own journeys, how has that influenced you know your own career path, your the work you're doing today, and where you want to go? For me, I think it sums it up. I don't want to go down the path that everybody else is going down. And so when I graduated, I never worked at where I graduated. I literally got on the train and went up to Moose Factory and got my first job with Health and Welfare Canada. Everybody else was staying, you know, was getting married, was staying in the hospital. And I thought, no, I don't want to do that. And so I think right from the beginning, because it's important to talk about your career story, because I think how we begin our career is a great indicator often how we're going to end our career. It's always been an adventure. It's always been something that no one else is doing. So all the work that Gail and I have done has started with nothing, whether it's our career mentorship, coaching, the Nurse Innovator Award, Award, Nurses Voices, everything we've done, we didn't take it from something. We started with nothing and had it build and build. For me, that's what it was. I, I always think back. And when I was in Moose Factory, there were a group of midwives from Australia and said, well, now why don't you come to Australia? And I thought, well, why not I come to Australia? You know, so it's always been that, so why not? Life changes, family mm -hmm. response, everything changes over time. But when you're, when I was young, which I still think these number of years later still guides, isn't it adventure? Like, mm -hmm. is, can it be fun? Can it be different? And can it be that not everybody, no, you know, I mean, so for example, when we do Nurses Voices, yes, people are doing podcasts, and whatever, but ours is good. You know, we want it to be different. We don't mm. want it to be the same. Mine on the surface looks very, uh, very different from Mary's. My, so I grew up in really a very warm family with, I would say some pretty, high expectations around education and around and around social responsibility. That's a bit how I how I define my early years. But I always felt and the best way to describe it is when my folks were talking to me about what I was going to do oh, when yeah, I graduated yeah. high school, yeah. I said I was going to be a nurse. Now I have to tell you I'm probably the only nurse in the world who didn't ever even know a nurse. No nurses in my family. I never saw a nurse. I didn't, I probably didn't even know what a nurse did. The first thing my father said, I don't want a daughter of mine doing that kind of work. What I learned about myself then was, don't tell me I can't do exactly. it. Exactly. As soon as you tell me I can't do it, yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. That's not always good because you can <laughs> tell I'm more mature, but you can get yourself into trouble. I always had this kind of, I could do something more. Mm -hmm. but I didn't really know what it was. Mm -hmm. And I would say I was quite risk averse mm -hmm. until I met my husband. Yeah. My husband, who is still my husband after whatever, 58 <laughs> years, a same husband, like he doesn't understand or didn't in those days, we were very young, the social convention. Like, if you want to see somebody, why wouldn't you drop in? Why do you have to phone them? I mean, mm -hmm. they're friends. What, you know, you don't care if their house is dirty. You're coming to see them. Mm -hmm. So that was very good for me. And he was, uh, you do what you have to do and you go where you have to go. And I all, I grew up in Winnipeg and I always thought, I want to leave. It was symbolic. I loved Winnipeg. I had lots of friends and there were good work opportunities. But I felt like the way to take the risk was to leave. So I did get married quite young and we did leave. And we went to a bunch of different places. And I always have given him the credit for, we went, he went away to do graduate work and I was working as a nurse. And he said, why don't you go to school? You could get a undergraduate degree. I said, Oh, you think I could do that? I, and then I did it. And then the next thing I got a master's degree and the next thing a PhD. Uh, and we were all over the place. And we came back then to Canada and to Toronto. And by then, I was very comfortable with not knowing anybody, 
going and getting a job where you don't know anybody, living in a city where you don't know anybody, renting accommodation you thought would be wonderful that turned out to have other, you know, all the kinds of things that you get from yeah. living. But I, at that time, had the experience of meeting such a diverse group of people mm -hmm. and nurses who were doing things I didn't even know from my very narrow nursing mm -hmm. education in the Winnipeg General Hospital. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden my eyes were opened and I think that made a very big difference uh, for me. And that's why when people say, well, what do you think you've done? I said, my job has been around my work. Whatever I've done has always been about investing in nurses. Okay. I have had lots of employment opportunities and a lot of things that would have probably earned me more money and given me more status, but would have meant leaving nursing, you know, going to work maybe in healthcare, but in other things. I like to stay close. Mm -hmm. I believe in nursing. Mm -hmm. And I think my early, the early adulthood, I won't say childhood, but I'd say the early adulthood, I learned how much pleasure you can get from just stepping off the curb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, you doesn't have to step off the cliff. Yeah. You just have to step off the curb. And uh, when sometimes I, my children are, they tell me they're middle-aged, doesn't, I can't believe that. I don't think of them that way, but they tell me that if there's anything I taught them, it was that. If you don't ask, for sure yeah. you won't get. And just try, take a step, you know, what's the worst thing? You'll have to get back on the curb. Someone will help you. I love both your stories. Like, you know, I I see two very powerful women and fierce. And fierce. Especially, oh, yeah. for, especially for your time at that time, I'm assuming yeah. it, it wasn't like the normal thing to, to witness. Exactly. I think the other thing, just when you're, it's just an aside, but we've all, so when Gail tells her story and I tell mine, there are similarities. I mean, oh, it's yeah, the, the, you know, but I think the other common theme, which I find significant is both Gail and I had very, they're both dead, very strong mothers mm -hmm. who yes. both our mothers were born in the same year and died in the same year wow. at 101. Wow. Now, yeah. that says a lot. So there is a fierceness. And I was saying to Gail, yeah, when I think of Anne, her mom, feisty. And I think in a way, we do, we are we're we're fierce we're feisty and but not stepping over everybody sort of fierce feisty and saying come on with us mm -hmm. like it's like the pot you know come on come on along for the for the ride right? yeah i think community um, is important i yeah. think family was very important to both of us growing yes. up we're still very close to our families yeah. Even when there are disagreements or whatever, family is yeah. your rock, it's yeah. your center, uh, whatever. But I think when yeah. you grow up like that, then community becomes Yeah, important. exactly. Because however you define community, yeah. you know, it can right. be a physical place, it can just be the groups of people, whatever, but that becomes important, I think. Yeah, it's all about that connection and the belongingness, yeah. right, as exactly. human beings. Right. But family was involved when we first started Dog oh, Wheeler. Yeah, oh, were they? Our oh. packages. My mother, I could see her, she was a better typist than I was. She would be typing, and nieces and nephews, and, and your kids may be filling folio oh. so this the our success is mm -hmm. not just based on mary and gail mm -hmm. it's based on this extended network of family colleagues mm -hmm. friends who again are we are we are in awe so often when people acknowledge how we have made such an impression in the their lives and we're saying but we could not be successful no. without you so it's not a two-woman show at all so it's well known and and documented the importance of beginnings it, because i you know I, I it's over sad but that is where you get your picture of what's important mm -hmm. and who you want to be in this right. world and right we yes. made a lot of luck. So despite what I said, neither Mary or I came from what I'd call um, families of means or mm -hmm. families with, uh, you know, lots of connections where, yeah. you know, you would, uh, 
and we came from very modest families yeah. Yeah. so it's more about people believing in mm -hmm. your worth as an individual mm -hmm. it's not about that they could you know i mean i ended up in uh, not doing a degree because i mean that a degree program in nursing would not have been something my family could have uh, could have supported at least not easily and there were three younger ones behind me so mm -hmm. i wasn't going to use all the all the resources but um mm -hmm. i think gives you a bit of um humility 